Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. This is week three of my OSCP update and I've got a little bit to go over. So this week I've been really short in time and I haven't been able to clock up as much time in the labs as I would have liked. Uh, I've recorded less than 30 hours this week which is uh, quite bad considering weeks one and two I attained 39 hours. Still one hour short of my goal but close enough. Uh, I think I only got 28 hours last week and that was just due to having a pretty full-on work schedule as well as I was just so exhausted after finishing all the lab exercises. Um, I just really had little motivation to get back to it. Um, but I pushed myself through and got into the actual uh, the lab network, whatever you call it, and I've started to have a bit of fun. So I've managed to attain root on three servers, and these are Alice, Mike, and Phoenix. Alex and Mike were pretty simple, especially Alice. Um, Phoenix was quite difficult. Now I know this is uh, known as one of the easier machines on the network. However, it appears that in the 2020 OSCP update, there may be some changes to some of these servers. As talking to my colleagues who have done uh, the OSCP, both noted that uh, they did not need to edit any exploit when they were running Phoenix. Um, but this is something that I actually had to do and it had me stuck for quite a few hours trying to find out just how to modify this exploit correctly. Um, but it te did teach me a valuable lesson uh, and that's more about uh, really reading and understanding both the exploit code and the underlying CVE as well. As this gives you a bit more of an insight as to what's actually happening uh, with the exploit instead of just, you know, firing it off and hoping for the best. Uh, this did teach me to, you know, do more research, read the CVE, read uh, vendor acknowledgement of the vulnerability as well, and it was ultimately that that got me able to uh, successfully get root on that server. Getting the initial shell was a piece of cake though. So in this process of these three machines, as well as the labs, I've kind of had a bit of a realization on one thing that I need to do to both increase my speed as well as be successful in the exam. And that's being able to know the basics really, really well. And what I mean by the basics are things like uh, your file transfers in multiple, multiple operating systems in multiple different methods, as well as spawning shells, so netcat or reverse reverse shell from Linux without using Netcat or Windows, one-liners using PowerShell and everything like that. Knowing these really well and knowing alternatives if options aren't available to you will definitely increase your speed and ability to uh, not get too exhausted on these machines and just keeps you focused more on the exploitation process than the tedious little tasks in between. So one thing that I've just recently learnt from being on the forums is that this network isn't a network of purely isolated machines. These machines can actually be related and any files that you find on these machines post exploitation could actually be used in other machines. I haven't come across that yet, but it has been told to me directly from a senior member on the forums and I am starting to find a few files on the machines that I have successfully compromised. Anyway, that's about it from me for today. Uh, hopefully next week I should have a lot more time to make up for the lost time I had this week. And as I'm finally really starting to enjoy this, I'm hoping to get a lot more uh, roots in the bag. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.